So Bob, let's shift gears a little bit um, and talk a little bit more about the relationship between credit availability and interest rates and its effect on the marketplace. You, you know, interest rates are still pretty low and looks like they're going to continue to be low for a while, but I don't think anybody really has a crystal ball on where rates are going to be. And, you know, credit went from being so available to not available at all. Seems like it's little available, starting to get more available now, although the securitization market is still pretty dead. And there's a ton of debt coming due in 2012 that I think a lot of which is going to be hard to place. What's the impact of all that kind of stuff in terms of, you know, valuation and rates and things like that? Well, Maury, that's a great question because I think one of the, the big downside risks to our marketplace is interest rate increases. And as you accurately said, nobody knows where they're going. However, um, there is a lot of upward pressure on rates from a number of different perspectives. One, um, when the Fed started to exit the marketplace, and the Fed clearly has to exit, their, their balance sheet doubled in 2009. Uh, when they stopped their asset buying program, which they were mainly buying mortgage-backed securities and treasuries, when they stopped that program at the beginning of April, you saw the 10-year go from 350 up to over 4%. So, and that was expected. What wasn't expected was that the turmoil in Europe was going to be so tangible that it was actually going to create a flight to safety and quality. Money poured into treasuries, and we saw the 10-year the go down into the low threes. So that, that has actually been something that's been helpful to our marketplace. But there is still a lot of upward pressure on, on rates. Inflation has been in check. Most economists believe in the short term we're okay from an inflation perspective, but the bears believe that in the midterm we're going to have significant inflation. With significant inflation comes an increase in, in interest rates to fight that. Uh, and you mentioned the, the credit availability and how that has affected things. And I think from a credit perspective, you also have to disaggregate the marketplace and look at different types of lenders. Um, from the community uh, banks and the regional banks in New York, we've been very, very fortunate. Um, if you look at the FDIC's watch list, there are about 517 banks on the FDIC's watch list today. Most of those are community and regionals from across the country. But the banks that are in trouble the most are the ones that have invested uh, debt in construction and development projects across the country. In the New York region, the, our community and regional banks did not do that. Most of their capital was invested in cash flowing assets. Um, so here, our banks are, are healthier than they are across the country. Um, with respect to the commercial banks and the money center banks, they have effectively gotten out of real estate lending. Um, some of the big banks that were really driving the market in that 2005 to 2007 period haven't made a real estate loan in a couple of years. Uh, and then you look at the CMBS market, which really took off during that 05 to 07 period, uh, where in 2007 the CMBS market was a $320 billion market nationally. That dropped to only $12 billion in 2008, all of which was in the first half of the year. And so from July of 08 through November of 09, there was zero issuance of CMBS. Um, we've had a few transactions that have occurred, but they've occurred at extremely conservative loan-to-value ratios, uh, and the CMBS lending that has gone on has impacted only a very, very narrow slice of the marketplace, so it's not a solution for people. You know, it's, it's interesting. I was looking at the CMBS issuance you were talking about over a period of years, went from, you know, 60 million a year to 70 million to 90 million to 150 million to 200 to 300. If you were to add up all those years, and it had been $60 million a year for a long period of time, if you were to add up all those amounts and f assume that maybe 50, 60 million is a stabilized sort of issuance amount, you have like a 10-year overhang of supply that I think is going to take a long time to get absorbed back into the market. So the appetite for sort of that type of lending is not going to be here for a while, even if that market tends to revive a little bit. There's just going to be no demand for those bonds because they're still working off all that excess inventory. Well, it's an interesting point. As I said earlier, with respect to the banks that have been most active here, the community and regional banks, that typically make five-year loans. So those 06 and 07 loans will mature in 11 and 12. 
most CMBS loans are 10-year loans. Mm -hmm. So the CMBS loans that were issued in 2006 and 2007 will be maturing in 2016 and 2017. Presumably, fundamentals will be better enough at that point that those properties will be okay, but there are some people in the marketplace who believe that we're in for another bump in the road in 2016 and 27 as that avalanche of CMBS is going to mature.